How are you guys doing? So I decided this weekend to pull the Z assembly off the machine and get my two X rails aligned to each other. And uh, yeah, I've got them uh, got them pretty good now. They were out a lot. They were out uh, probably twenty thou. Um, I'm only doing the top one. I'm not looking at the bottom one. But uh, yeah, twenty thou of a bend somewhere in the middle, and then on this end it was out by forty thou. Uh, so a lot, 40 thou is uh, a millimeter, 20 thou is half a millimeter, so that's, that's a considerable amount between the uh, top and bottom rails, and that certainly affects the alignment of the spindle when it's uh, pointing down when you're drilling and stuff. I never really noticed it because uh, for the longest time I've uh, just been using the, the vise, 6 and vise, and it's just working on a small little section, so when I did the alignment to uh, when I was shimming and, and tramming in the spindle, which is over there, uh, I I did it all in that area, so it didn't really affect me. But uh, yeah, trying to get the whole thing in now. Uh, yeah, so this is a good way to do it. You'll want to get a dowel indicator attached on one side. I'm using the bottom side. And uh, if you have your carriages mounted so the machine surface, which is right there, uh, maybe on like these are probably cheap ones so they have a machine surface on one side you can see right there on the other side there is nothing so if you're assembling one of these machines put the machine surfaces on the front sides and it'll make your life easier if you're doing this stuff and uh, yeah and then with with that I have a clamp on the bottom you just go along and you uh, you adjust the bolts well so what I did was I took this rail completely off and I cleaned up the bottom. Uh, I I found out that the these holes they had burrs on the bottom, so I used a flat stone to make it all nice and flat, clean up the uh, tube underneath it, and uh, yeah, the uh, the tube you probably you might have seen in a previous video. Like these structural tubes are not they're not like machine grade surfaces. Uh, but I did some uh, measurement with a laser level and a webcam, which is actually over here. Here's a webcam. Uh, you can see that video how I did that. But I just determined that uh, it wasn't. It was so close to being good that it for the it's not, for the rest of the machine. Like I didn't want to bother trying to nail it and make it like perfect. So it was good enough for me. And uh, I've got these two rails uh, aligned to about half a thou, except for one part somewhere over here. There's like a kink and it's out by more than a thou. It could be the bottom rail, not sure. The top one, yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna bother going and doing the bottom one because I have, I have all these caps on the bottom, just like I had on the top. And, these things are a pain in the butt to take out, and certainly on the bottom, so I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna leave it for another day. And uh, yeah, so I'm at the point of putting this thing back together now. And uh, uh, yeah, these carriages, because they're, so all the rails are all open, exposed. They just get all gnarly and gross on the inside. This is the secondary axes, this is what I call the W axes, and it moves the same as the Z, and you can see, uh, yeah, I have another video of making this thing, but yeah, I have, you can see here, I have, uh, this is how I mount it, so I got four bolts there, and then I got another one over there, and that coincides with the bolts over here, and yeah, this is just one of these off-the-shelf uh, linear axes. This one, I have a bunch of quarter inch steel. So all the gray stuff that's been painted with primer, all that is on there. And uh, what I'm thinking of doing is, uh, so I have this thing off. I'm gonna keep this thing off and in replacement on this side, probably I will make this a little more rigid and I'm gonna attach a probe to this, 3D probe and use that as uh, my my probing system and what I will have to do because one of the issues I'm going to run into is this ball screw 
is not that great. And uh, well, I'm actually going to replace the ball screw into this one with a uh, double nut one. I'll show you that one in a sec. But uh, what I will have to do, let me just, uh, yeah, we're not going to see that. It's in there somewhere. What I'll do is uh, when I get to that point where I'm doing the probing, I will map out the motion of the ball screw on here to the motion of the ball screw when I when I put this one in here. So I'm not just going to go by the pitch of the two ball screws and calculate it that way. I'll actually map it out. So the probe will be on this side and on this side what I will probably do is set up an, ele an electrical mechanism where I move the Z assembly down slowly until it makes an electrical connection and I'll do all this through Python and make a uh, very accurate map probably a subsampling to some point and uh, just make it so uh, I'll be able to find very accurately the the Z position uh, in relation to how it maps out here and at the same time I'll be able to check the repeatability of this whole system and see how accurately I can get with it here's the new screw this is a C5 grade and it is a double nut and this one is a 1605 and it's replacing a 1204 so it's uh it's bigger same size as down there and uh yeah i'll also be having to replace the bk block so this one is a, a bk10 block and there'll be i have a bk12 uh, c5 block that's also going to be going on to this and uh, I pre when I was making this plate here in the CAD design, I had this thing already made so the the pocket here is large enough for a BK12. I will have to uh, right here. This is where the nut block housing goes. the The bolt pattern here is different, so I will be shifting this down by a centimeter or so. And because it's bigger and thicker and stuff. I will also have to put in a pocket probably something this long and that's just to fit the the length of the, the nut and the nut housing and it's going to go in there so I'll probably have to pocket out maybe eight millimeters or so. Other than that I have uh, plans on I'm replacing I've temporarily put the the MDF spoil board back in just so I can work but I'm planning on putting in a half inch steel plate, same size as this spoil board. And then uh, that's going to be mounted to the hand made uh, bolt holes that go on these three tubes. And uh, that just that, that way I can uh, reproject and, and get the bolt holes from this MDF or um, find them another way or so. And what what I'll do with that is I'll get that uh, half inch steel plate put in there and that will give me a good base for putting in a fixture plate. So I'm going to put in a three quarter inch fixture plate that's going to be the same size as the machine's workspace. And that brings up another point. I'm also going to be putting in longer rails for the Y axis. You notice that the, the rails stop here and I'm I'm missing six inches and the screw is set up to you know notice that this plate here overlaps and it goes over top of the BK block and same with the BF block down there and they're put in a position where once I put in longer rails I'll be able to use um, I think five and a half inches of this so I'll gain five and a half inches of travel and my new fixture plate will be that size to make use of that space. But that's going to be uh, in the future. It's probably going to take a while for me to get all that on there. The uh, steel plate that's going to be put in here is 200 pounds. And uh, I'm not sure how much the fixture plate will be. Probably much less. Probably less than 100 pounds. With the steel plate on there, it'll allow me to very accurately just put the fixture plate where I want with... Uh, machine CNC machine holes that align perfectly that way I don't have to worry about the alignment of these handmade holes which are oh, there's one there and there they're that space there's uh, I'm not sure how many of them 
but they're on the three tubes. Lastly, I have a bunch of uh, work with uh, milling some aluminum parts, so I'm looking at getting a MQL system for coolant and uh, trying to put that into a timeline of getting that onto the machine. Um, I'm still doing the flood coolant, but the flood coolant thing is just, it's gonna take, it's taking time, right? So I think I can get an MQL system on this machine much quicker, maybe an off the shelf thing, or maybe something where I kind of assemble it out of other parts. And uh, that will greatly help with uh, working with aluminum. Uh, I wanna do a alcohol based uh, system just because it's cleaner and everything evaporates and I can always work with the garage doors open. So the health wise is not a problem. This new Z ball screw seems to be of a pretty good grade. It's uh, it's from Aliexpress in China, so we'll see how that works out. I've never used one of these things. Hopefully there's like uh, maybe there's a way to adjust the two two loops together maybe, maybe with some preload, I'm not sure. Or maybe just run it as is. But it seems pretty good. Uh, I think it's a uh, better quality than what I got on the machine. It should certainly help with uh, the uh, surface finish on uh, milling on the bottom, especially on compared to the uh, 1204 that I have in there. The 1204, the uh, the, the ball nut, uh, it's, I haven't broken a bearing, but I can just tell that there's, it's getting a little loose on me, so it should greatly improve that. In order to put the pocket in for the uh, new uh, ball screw and all that, I got a mill out on this thing and Obviously I'm gonna to have to figure out how to do that without having this plate on there. So what I will do is make, I'll make this same plate on the CNC out of plywood. And it'll just be a one-time use thing so I can put the plywood piece back on, mill out the pocket on the aluminum one and then just swap them back out. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a bit of a puzzle when you're, you're upgrading the machine with the machine. Sometimes you gotta uh, find temporary solutions like that. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to give you guys an update on the machine, what I'm doing. It feels like every time I get the machine back together, I take it apart again for some kind of upgrade or whatever. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, it's Saturday right now, I'm gonna put the head back on and get this machine running by the end of the day. And at some other point, I'll try and work in the, the upgrades of the, the ball screw and the new rails in one go so I can I have a lot of downtime. But yeah, I will see you guys next time.